Hello and welcome to this next uh, Substance Paint tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to have a look at the TARDIS model we built in Blender in the previous set. Um, uh, so well let's get started. So first of all uh, we'll go to File and New and then select our model. Uh, I'm going to do it 2048. We can change that as we go. Uh, I haven't done a UV tile workflow so that should all be good. So let's let that come in. There we go. Now, first of all, I'm going to bake our texture sets. So if I go to the texture set settings and click on the uh, little box with an arrow through it or a slash through it and click bake, um, I've got all my basic settings here. The general ones that I've changed are ambient occlusion, uh, which I set to max rays and minimum occlusion distance of 0 0.005 and the same for uh, curvature. So let's bake those maps and that will take a moment or two. A moment or two longer than I want it to, obviously. Come on. Okay, so that's those baked. So what we'll do next. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the box material, which is uh, basically um, all of the frame and the doors. If I click the uh, focus mode, you'll see what it doesn't include. And there's a few things uh, in there. Not very much. The windows, the window frames, the light and some signs. Uh, but yeah, most of it is this one. So let's add a couple of layers to this. So I want a, a base layer, which is going to be my uh, lightest color. Whoops, got caps lock on. We want a kind of medium layer, which is you know a darker version. And then we'll have the dirt layer, Oops. which will be uh, the, the darkest dust. There we go, dirt. Okay, so in my Purif here I have a, uh, a an image uh, of the TARDIS to give me an idea of, you know, the colours that are uh, there. So for the base, I'm going to go down to the base colour, click on the colour, and then click and hold on this little uh, eyedropper, and then bring that over to one of the lighter colors on my image and then I'll let go and then for the medium layer we'll do the same but for this one I want somewhere in the middle a darker version there we go and then for the dirt layer we want the darkest version uh, so somewhere up here I think or perhaps down here would be better yes there we go okay so let me minimize whoops that's Blender. Uh, let me minimize substance. Uh, not substance. <laughs> Pure ref. And I'm just going to turn off the darkest layer. And now I'm going to blend these two layers together just quickly. So we'll add some detail to this as we go. But initially, I'm just going to broadly uh, adding things in. So right click, add black mask. Right click and add a generator. And this generator, we're going to use the ambient occlusion generator. There we go. Uh, now, initially, it's probably not going to do an awful lot um, because, generally speaking, we need to invert it. If I go to the mask layer, the mask view, you'll see that white is being, you know, being revealed, and the darker colours are being obscured. And this is the wrong way around. We want the vast majority of it to be dark. So I'll click on invert and that's what we get. And now we can adjust our settings here to accommodate for it. So if you open up the ambient occlusion uh, options here, we have blur, balance and contrast. So we can take the balance down. There we go. And then we get a kind of a smoother transition. 
uh, we could take the contrast up and it will be much sharper and I don't want that just yet I want it to be quite smooth and we could blur it if we wish uh, I'm not going to blur it I don't think or at least an only very small amount uh, I think that's fine as it is wouldn't expect it to be perfect at this stage because you know this is a generator you know it's only going to do so much um, we're going to need to do some things uh, with some paint okay so in addition to that uh, I want to add another generator and this one will be the curvature generator if I add that in you'll see that completely overrides what's underneath it uh, so we need to just change the blend to an add linear dodge add there we go and now we can adjust the curvature settings so here's curvature and we have uh, contrast huge uh, medium uh, fine soft sharp etc and I'm just going to reduce some of these values until it gets to somewhere about where I want it again depending upon the model you've got you know it might depend on you know the settings you use every model is different um, well <laughs> the vast majority of models are different and we can actually take the brightness down a little bit just to soften that up so now I've picked up the kind of the inner and the outer uh, of our mask here where we have occlusion we've got our nice mask and where we've got these edges we have a mask so if I go back to the materials now we should see what we've got and that's not too bad um, but now that I can see it I think I might actually change the ambient one uh, let's decrease the balance there we go I want quite broad uh, areas uh, in there I don't want there to be too much in the way of you know I don't want it to be a thin edge where this darkness is I want it to be quite thick just to uh, you know exaggerate a little bit okay so just a couple of adjustments here can increase the roughness on both of these layers uh, though not so much on the top uh, or the uh, uppermost layer because I want there to be some sort of difference there so let's come out of focus mode that's what we've got that's a reasonably good start uh, but we need to add more to this so in the next bit we're just going to uh, use some paint um, options to add in some uh, detail to our current masks so I'll talk to you then okay so looking at our kind of reference here we have this kind of vertical kind of dirt brush kind of strokes in here and I want to kind of replicate that in our layer so above our curvature mask here we'll add a paint layer and then let's just minimize pure ref oops there we go go to our brushes and find something suitable so uh, what have we got we got dirt brushed so uh, I have a bit of a policy here uh, in that I never want to do anything more than once <coughs> so since I'm never going to see both sides of this TARDIS at the same time uh, I'm going to turn mirroring on and this is going to mirror left to right uh, I want this particular one to be mirroring front to back so let's mirror in Z instead and now front to back now whatever I do on the front is now going to replicate to the back so all I'm doing uh, with my brush selected if I go down to my brush options make sure I've got that there I'm going to paint in some extra brush strokes to our mask let's go to the mask view so we can see it I can resize my brush a bit there we go I actually want to rotate the brush up and down just adding in some detail that would never be captured by our uh, you know generator mask because you know this information is just not in the model 
there we go so I'm just brushing in just to give it a little bit of shape here and there and this should be happening in the back at exactly the same time there we go so what won't be happening in the back is these panels that I'm not painting so let me just make my brush a bit bigger there there we go that's better and then go around the back you should see that our marks are there currently I just need to do something with this one to sort that out now equally I want to brush out some detail so I'm going to set that down to black and then I'm going to, whoops reduce the size of my brush I've got control and right mouse held down there and now I'm just going to put some uh, darker parts in here and these are going to be very clean compared to you know they're going to expose the whole of the underneath essentially and this is just you know to break up the kind of um, how should I put it um, calculated nature of the uh, you know of the curvature and the, the occlusion so let's go back and have a look at that see how that's worked out let's go to the material and there we have it so you see we've got some kind of nice painted bits we've got some nice uh, occlusion we've got some nice curvature and of course I need to do the same on the sides but once again you know I'm not interested in doing both sides never going to see them at the same time unless there's a mirror and I probably won't notice then uh, but I just need to switch my uh, mirroring over to X and then we'll do exactly the same thing I'm just going to paint in not looking at the uh, the mask this time just going to see how it's going to come out you know as we go now these bottom ones are being included quite a lot uh, by the occlusion uh, the occlusion mask we put on here uh, so I might actually take some of that out let's make that a little bigger just a little bit down the bottom now I could even go sort of somewhere between and blend those in a little bit it doesn't have to be always black or always white you know it could be you know anywhere in between there we go so what do we got let's turn symmetry off and go over to our preview view and that's not looking too bad okay so there's more to do on that uh, we've got the dirt layer uh, which we're going to follow a similar process on um, and then uh, yeah we'll go on to the other sections so I shall talk to you uh, shortly okay so um, just before I go to expose the dirt layer uh, I'm just going to paint in some additional um, dark areas onto our posts here so uh, let's take a different brush out there we go I'll rotate that round with alt and left mouse and now I'm just going to paint in here now you'll see that I'm getting some stretching there and uh, that is most likely because uh, I'm on tangent planar see if I paint with tangent planar here it's going to pick a plane and go with it and then it's going to smear out on the kind of planes adjacent to it but if I do it by camera and look at that angle it won't if I look from this angle and paint it's going to do it uh, but at least we can do kind of corners like this and you know it should come out nice so I'm just going to paint down our uh, posts here a little bit just to break it up so it's not all completely um, you know the light color there we go uh, just a note on that actually um, <laughs> yeah. 
well actually no we'll do uh, you could have I could have put symmetry on there but you know I can see three of these posts at any angle so perhaps using the symmetry is not the best idea in this case okay so just go around and, and do all those and uh, I'll do that between videos but uh, I don't want to bore you too much with lots and lots of detail uh, so if I activate our dirt layer now that will obscure everything so what I want to do first is add a black mask to get rid of it and now I'm going to add a fill layer to put kind of a random pattern over the top of everything here so if we go to our textures folder and I want to find uh, some sort of grunge texture uh, so let's type in grunge up here and I want something quite sparse so I think this one let's have a look let's go to the mask view and there so what it was white is coming through and that's going to expose some of that uh, dark dirt layer if I go back up to material and change this color well, actually it's probably easier just to change the roughness if I make it super shiny we should see it there we go so you can see there we've got those super shiny areas and that's where our dirt is coming through but the um, it's a little bit fuzzy so let's go see what we can do on our um, options down here so we can increase the contrast which will take you know some of the fuzziness out of it and stop make it a little bit more <coughs> a little bit tighter uh, let's change the balance so I can take the balance up and I'll get more and I can take the balance down and I'll get a little less uh, but I just want to get it to a point where you know it's about right Going to increase the contrast a bit more and there we go so there we have some kind of random spots all over the place uh, not too many uh, but we could you know change our scale here say to two snip over to the mask view there we go and now that's what uh, where we're getting it um, it's not quite right it's not quite how I want it um, but it's not far off yeah no I think that's all right I'm going to increase the perhaps contrast a little well let's take it to somewhere around max and the balance I'm going to bring up there I think that's okay so let's go back to our material view now I don't want this to be super reflective uh, so let's take the roughness up a little and it might be that actually it's not dark enough it looks like it would be dark enough um, but it's not actually all that visible might just could be because there's not a lot of it uh, but I'm going to go in here and just take the uh, value or the variation uh, vibrancy sorry down a little bit on that color to make them a little bit darker there we go okay and of course you know we're not going to just leave that as it is we're going to add to it so we'll right click and add a paint layer and now I can go in and sort of brush in where I want there to be a little more dirt and I want there to be a bit more kind of up in the crevices here and at the top and the bottom there we go just paint that roughly in it's a little uh, strong and a little ham-fisted so what I do to kind of accommodate for that is just take my color down to um, black to remove some of it and then just lightly click over 
some of the edges to blend that down a little bit. It's still too much. Now I think my black is too black, <laughs> or my dark is too dark. So I'm going to bring that V value back up a little bit. There we go. Seems in small doses it kind of works, but in larger doses it doesn't. Which is fair enough. Okay, so um, what else do I want? I want to put some on the bottom. So let's do that. Uh, I'm going to add a new generator here. Um, but I'm going to move it below my grunge. There, take those off. And for this one, we'll use the, uh, la, 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 the mask editor. There we go. Now it comes on with a load of curvature. I'm going to turn that down a little bit and go to the mask view. So that's where I'm getting it there. If I turn that right off, you'll see it all goes black. Uh, I can adjust that a bit. I don't want there to be much there at all on the curvature. Uh, so let's take big, huge and large out and medium. Soft down a little bit. A little bit of fine, just so it's quite, you know, faint. Uh, but what I do want to use here is the position gradient. So we'll turn the position gradient up and that's what we get. Um, it's not quite right um, because the white is at the top and I want the white to be at the bottom. So we'll open up the curvature options and invert it. And now I'm not getting quite so much at the bottom as I want. So we'll open up the position options and we'll just have a, a go here. So if I change the balance, if I turn the balance up, I get more dark on the bottom. If I increase the contrast, adjust the balance again just trying to get most of it just happening at the bottom there we go and take the brightness there we go uh, we don't want right to left we want top to bottom and we can just adjust that a little bit to get a little bit more uh, linear dodge add that should be good uh, I do need to change these, so let's change this one to at linear dodge add. There you can see what's going on. Oh, I've got white at the top, I want white at the bottom, silly man. Let's go back to the mask editor and invert it again. There we go, that's more like it. Yeah, up here is a little much, so let's take the blend down here just so it fits in a little bit better. There we go. Let's have a look. There we are. Okay, so uh, I'll probably do a, a couple of little tweaks in between, you know, just to uh, add in some dirt here and there. Uh, but that's largely it for the body. I do want to put some grain in it, uh, which we'll do next before we go on to the other uh, zones. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so let's collapse these down for the moment. And uh, what I want to do is add a new layer. And I'm gonna put it at the bottom. I like to put the height layer at the bottom because I might want to reference it above. And then I can uh, I can do that then. Uh, so we'll call this one grain. Okay, so let's turn everything off except height. There we go, and pop a little height on it. And then we'll add a black mask. And for this mask, we want a fill. And from our textures up here, we want the anisotropic. Is, is that how you spare? I don't know. There we go. So I'll drag and drop that on there. As you can see, it's going horizontally at the moment, which is of no use to us at all. So we'll rotate that around 90 degrees. And now it's going the right way, but it's too uh, thick, essentially. Uh, so we have a few options here. So if I go to noise parameters, I can increase the number of uh, Y directions here, or Y iterations, and it will increase. 
and I can probably go even further than that and even further uh, until I get what I want uh, but generally speaking you probably have to go quite a long way for it to actually work um, now uh, another thing I want to know is remember when we UV'd you know we aligned all of these panels in the same direction uh, and this is why so we've got a vertical grain here and we've got a horizontal grain here and you know if you put those two bits of wood together that's how they would be you know you wouldn't have both going vertically because one would be too weak and it would snap okay so let's uh, just have a look here so now I've got it more or less what I want I can go to the UV scale and increase until I get to a value that I am more or less happy with okay so the actual height value is too much so we'll take that down say 0.01 that's too little 0.03 there we go now at least we can see it and we can see it from a distance which is uh, important if you're too subtle and you get to a distance you, you probably won't see it you know so you have to kind of uh, yeah you have to kind of be I can put it a bit subjective about it you know have a look from the back have a look close up if you get too close it's probably going to be too much but if you get too far away you probably won't see it so it's balancing that to somewhere in the middle there we go so that's uh, a, a very basic grain and we can add a filter on top of that uh, we'll add the warp filter there we go and that will just start to break it up and give it more of a organic -y kind of feeling uh, we can take that value down or up if you go too far up it's going to just go crazy uh, so I'm just going to make a very small kind of value there to give us you know something that doesn't just look like straight lines okay so on top of that we're going to put a directional noise so let's add a new uh, fill and we'll use our directional noise here we've got lots of different directional noises uh, I want something that looks a bit uh, kind of in and out a bit not quite so uniform so we'll take this directional noise here um, you should see that's going in the wrong direction so we will rotate that 90 degrees and now it's going in the right direction uh, we can increase the scale a little and now blend it so I want to add this to what's below so we will click a, an add value and if you wonder whether it's doing anything or not just turn it off and on and you'll see the difference it's making there we go okay so um, let's pop some grain into it next I want to work on the other uh, materials on here before I sort of come back and you know have the think and I might go between the materials to do some adjustments here and there okay so we'll start that in the next one okay so um, we're going to need to do these windows at some point in time so I've just selected window and cleared out the uh, layers there and we'll add a couple of pieces here so this one I'm going to use a plastic I think let's have a look at materials and we'll just start with a plastic and I'll adjust that one so it's plastic matte disable that one and I just want to take this color down let's look at what our reference says uh, I think our reference is probably a model um, so I'm not actually going <laughs> yeah no, perhaps I will let's let's have a look so uh, we want a gray kind of uh, texture here so let's pick this gray somewhere around there I want a lighter version and then this one will do the same we'll have plastic on it and then we'll get the darker version there we go and we'll blend these together 
Uh, so first of all for this I'm going to take a bit of artistic license I'm going to add a generator and we'll use the ambient occlusion generator and then we'll adjust it. Let's minimize pure ref. So let's go to the view. Where are we? Uh, I want the mask view. Oh, I haven't put this on a mask, have I? I'm a silly man. So right click, add black mask, right click, add generator, ambient occlusion. There we go. And now we'll have a look at the mask view and it's very subtle at the minute uh, and I don't want it to be like that of course uh, I'm going to invert it and then under the occlusion details we'll adjust these to get where we want to be so I want some it going a little bit like that it's up the contrast bit more blur, take the balance up, there we go. So we've got quite a few uh, vari <laughs> variations going on here, um, I'm not entirely sure I'm keen on them. Uh, on the other hand, you know, these are, how can I put it, suitably random. Um, I think it's going to work out, I think most of it is coming from my blur actually. See, I've got a very tight thing there, so I'm going to try and take the blur off and adjust everything else to get to what I want. Let's take the contrast down. Yeah, it's not really working. Let's take the blur up just a tiny bit. There, yeah, somewhere like that. I have a global blur I can use, but I don't think that's going to make much of a difference to me. I increase the balance, that's not doing anything either. Okay, let's have a look, see what it looks like anyway. Some material, yeah, it's not quite what I want. So, we're going to add a paint over the top of that. I'm going to read a, a real small brush here. And I'm going to go into isolation mode. So now I can sort of paint around these edges to take those horrid lines out. This won't take me some time so I'll I'll do one or one side and then I'll uh, go back and do the other when we're finished. Whoops. Or rather between videos. <laughs> there we go. Add a little bit of grain to it as well with the brush, which is okay. So the generators and such like, they do a lot of heavy lifting for you, but they don't do all the work. You know, sometimes you do need to come in and just refine them manually. There we go. So as I said, I'll come back and do the other ones uh, you know, in between videos. And I'm actually going to uh, take this down a little bit because I want to take some of the middle out. And I want to be a bit softer with this, so I'm going to use a different brush. Uh, we we'll use a basic soft. Where's basic? It's here somewhere. Ah, basic soft. There we are. So let's take that right down. Oops, not that far down. There we go. So let's go back to our... Oh, I'm already on the material view. So let's take it out of there and see what we've got. That's more or less what I was looking for uh, in that respect. But then I actually want to put a grain and a kind of a dirt over the top of it. So we'll add a new fill. And then we're going to find a dirty texture. Uh, D-I-R-T. And see what we've got. I want a, quite a sparse dirt. I don't want it to be too heavy. So let's try dirt 2. And that's good. Got these little specks that are doing quite nicely. 
Uh, we need to change that to an additive, so linear dodge add, and there we go. Okay, so the actual material properties aren't all that great here. I'm going to leave the dirt alone for the minute and decrease the roughness of the uh, underlying texture. And then I'll do a similar job with the overlying texture, but I don't want to go anywhere near because it's dirt, you know, we want it to be less reflective. There we go, somewhat along those lines. And our reference says it's metallic, so I'm going to turn the metallic up on the windows themselves. And then I'm going to leave the uh, metallic off for the um, for the dirt because, as I said, it's dirt. Okay, so uh, in between videos, I'm just going to go through and do the other windows. And um, then we'll come back and perhaps do the frames. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so depending upon the reference you look at, this area is either white uh, or it's blue. Uh, I'm going to go, well, let's do a bit of both perhaps. So on the box texture, I'm just going to select all my layers and copy them and go to my uh, frame texture, get rid of that one and paste those in. There we go, let's have a think about it and there we are. So some of these will contain paint layers which I'm going to get rid of because they won't be relevant to this particular texture. It's fine, That's, has that got a paint on it? No, there we go. So that's kind of uh, the blue version. Uh, if you want to go for a white version, then it's a question of changing uh, these colors to you know whatever you want them to be. There we go, I'm gonna leave it like that for the moment. And then move on to the signs. Now I've got two kinds of signs here. I've got these police, um, call box signs up here and then there's like a little written sign down here so I'm going to create two folders and separate them so right click add black mask right click add black mask and then uh, we're going to add those bits in so I'll go into the fill selection go into the mask view and now uh, the top one will pop these calls in or the these call signs there we go and for the bottom one we'll select our little sign wherever it's gone there it is okay so they should all be white which they are and that one's white on that one excellent so first of all I want the material for these and looking at the uh, reference let's look uh, we've got like a dark shiny um, material for police uh, box and then uh, a more kind of metally plate material uh, for the uh, the bottom one so let's just set up the basic materials uh, so on the top one we'll right click and add a fill let's get rid of pure F. go on to our libraries and see what we've got under materials under here I want this plastic PVC so I'm just going to drag it over into the fill <laughs> not on the black mask silly man sorry I did that layer on the mask not on the layer so let's uh, add a fill in here there we go let's make sure that's in the folder and then I can click on the PVC there we go so this color is incorrect, of course. It needs to be much darker than that. It's kind of the right shade, uh, but not, you know, it's not dark enough. There we go. Now, there are, or do appears, it does appear to be some kind of damage in those. Uh, so we can put that in, a bit of damage and dirt. So let's go back to, or minimize pure ref there we go so we'll add a layer above that one so we'll add a fill 
Oops. There we go. And then on this one, we'll add a uh, another fill layer. Sorry, I'm losing my brain. Add a black mask, add a fill layer, and then we'll go and pick a dirt again. So it's D, D. And I think our dirt two worked out quite well last time, so hopefully it will this time. Excellent, it does. Now, uh, we've seen quite a lot of dirt on there, uh, relatively speaking, compared to our previous one. And that's because our UV is much bigger, or the islands are much bigger on the UV. So on this, uh, whoops, didn't mean to rotate that. Uh, on this uh, material, our UV is very big. And I've made it big deliberately because I want to put some text on it and I want it to be readable. And if it's too small, it won't be. Uh, but if we look on our box, you know, everything is much, much smaller. So that's why we're getting a slightly different uh, view there. Uh, let's go back to signs again and back to my 3D view. There we go. So that works out quite nicely. Uh, I'm also going to add in a generator and we'll give ambient occlusion a go. And once again, we need to just adjust this. So uh, ambient occlusion, I'll invert that and let's blur a little bit, take the balance. There we go, some along those lines. There we go. And contrast, I think it's okay. Um, but we're losing kind of an edge. It's not going right up to the edge, but we can fix that. If I, whoops, actually I need to change this to additive first. So linear dodge add, there we go. And then we'll add a new layer above this. So this time we want a generator and we'll use our UV borders. So I can use the UV borders now to just fill in the edge. And if I change this to an additive, that should do the job. And perhaps it's just a case of, you know, blending those in a little bit so that, uh, you know, it doesn't look quite so um, sharp. I just want it enough, if you like. And just to take the value down a little bit there, we'll take the mix value down. There we go, somewhere along those lines. Okay, so on the layer itself, um, let's have a look at the PRF, there we go. Uh, I've overdone it quite a lot. Um, you don't have to overdo it quite as much as I have. Um, but yes, we are looking at kind of white flecks. So let's go and have a look at our uh, dirt. And I might actually change this a little bit, change the balance down. Let's get rid of PRF. Oops, there we go. And that will reduce the amount of dirt I've got there. Might increase the contrast to make it a little more certain. And then I'm going to reduce what's going on around the edges a little bit. There we go. That's more like it, perhaps. In fact, our ambient occlusion, let's take that down quite a bit. Let's take the blur. And the balance up. There we go. That's more like it. There we go. Okay, so the layer itself, uh, I want the roughness to be high on this because it's dirt, and I don't want it to, you know, I don't want it to contribute to the uh, shininess of this material at all. And I think I'll probably take the color down, make it a little grayer to do that. Okay, so next we need to put some text on this. Uh, we'll do that in the next section, I think. I think I'll separate it out to uh, break things up a bit. Um, one last thing then. I'm going to add a paint layer to this, and I'm going to put some... Uh, no, actually, I'll add a fill layer to this, and I'll pop some cracks on. So in our library, if I filter for cracks, Perhaps marble, 
sometimes you have to get a bit creative about what you're looking for here so we use marble fine so let's put that kind of marble over the top of everything so we'll change this to uh, an add again and then we'll adjust our values here to get some cracks going you could either have a lot if you turn the balance up or you can turn it down we can have a look under the noise parameters perhaps take some of the disorder out increase the amount of marbling to you know just put some random stuff in we like random stuff there we go okay so in the next one we'll put the text up on there and then we'll move on to this little sign down the bottom so i shall talk to you then. Okay, so we're going to put some text on here now, and so let's have a look. First of all, I need a new layer. I'm going to create a fill, which is going to control our properties for the actual texture itself. Uh, but then we'll add a black mask with a paint layer. So let's uh, add paint to that. And then on a hard brush, so I'm going to basic hard, and in my alphas, I want to go in there and type font and then pick one and I'm going to pick this one because I think it's perhaps the closest uh, to what I've got so you'll see that initially it just comes up as substance and we can change that in the alpha settings so we want uh, police uh, then a bit of space so we can fit our middle text in uh, that seems to be about right. It seems to be even about the right size, but it's not. Um, it's cutting off the text. So let's just uh, take the size down on that a little bit until it fits inside the alpha. There we go. And now I'm going to increase my alpha. Now, um, if it doesn't increase properly, you might want to change this from tangent warp to uh, UV. Uh, or perhaps even tangent planar so I'm going to stamp that on there and I'm going to go around to the side now I can't use symmetry on this because um, basically it will, it will just write the text backwards which is of no use to man nor beast there we go let's pop that there so we've got police box and now all we need is the public call bit so go back to the alpha and then uh, we want to type public and call is this an upper or lower? I don't know, I'm going to write it properly cased public call now I can reduce that down and then just rotate so I can get face on and put that in between try and line it up there we go and then do the same all around oops that's a little high I think there we go there we've gone all around so now we've done that um, we can change our properties on it so if I go to the text layer or the uh, the material layer uh, I don't really want the height uh, I do want rough I don't want metal uh, but I want, want I might want emission so let's have a look at the ref I think it's, it's just flat white text essentially um, it might even be metal but I'm imagining it being kind of glowing if you like it's got like a light behind it um, I seem to have remember seeing that from my uh, youth perhaps so for the emissive I'm going to pop a colour in there perhaps a bluish just to give it a little bit of uh, brightness beyond you know the uh, the background there we go Let's have a look at the uh, the rendered view. Yeah, that looks okay. 
okay so next then we'll come in and do this uh, little sign down here so i will talk to you then okay so i want to put some text on here so let's have a look see what the text is uh, so we've got a few lines and some of them are uh, one particular font size and these ones in the middle are another so let's uh, see if we can do that so on the folder we'll uh, add a fill layer to control the properties and I'm going to turn that black so that the text will come out black and then we'll add a black mask and we've got our um, thing here uh, now lining this up is a little bit tricky but I'm going to try uh, I'm going to start with perhaps the bigger one so pull to open free and public I'm going to start from the bottom so let's pull to open first so I've typed in pull to open there and this wants to be I think somewhere about there somewhere about that size there we go uh, I'm not sure if I can do anything here uh, to perhaps use a bolder no oh no here we go I'm gonna go bold let me undo oops <laughs> too far add black mask add paint there we go I'm gonna leave that in bold so let's pop pull to open down there and then we want some other text so free and public so we want free first so I want space to write our police telephone and then free whoops and then uh, I want another space for that middle text which is for use of so free for use of public there we go so now police whoops helps if I could type police telephone for the top this time it needs to be smaller there we go actually I'm going to undo that I'm going to take it off bold now see if it actually looks any different And then for use of pop that in there <coughs> and we have a few lines down here uh, which I'm going to attempt to do in one lump uh, so let's do that advice and assistance oh come on John Advice and assistance obtainable immediately, and perhaps a couple of uh, a spare line. Whoops! Oh goodness! Officer and cars respond. all calls there we go so let's see if we can fit that in let's minimize that perhaps take that down a little and pop that somewhere around there there we go so now we've got our little sign and uh, we need to give it some properties underneath this of course so let's add a fill and drag that below I want this to be a uh, kind of faded painted metal if that makes sense uh, let's see what we've got in here so let's have a look at the smart materials type in painted uh, steel paint steel painted uh, steel gun let's try steel painted so I'm going to need to drag and drop that over there because it's a smart material not a 
um, you know, just a single material. I'll delete that one we added in there. And then we can come in here and change our properties. So I'll change my paint to kind of an off white. There we go. Uh, metal details. Let's see what we've got on there. That's got a dirt and a blur. Uh, it's just outlined it a little bit too much for my liking. Um, what we got here? Base steel. Let's turn these off and see which is which. Uh, it's this top one that's doing the doing the deed. Uh, so we've got a mask editor. Okay, let's have a look in the mask editor. Uh, it's got a texture on it. It's got curvature on it. Let's take the curvature down. There we go. And yeah, the curvature needs to come down even more. I haven't got much curvature on this, so it's not really uh, helping us an awful lot. So let's adjust our values here. Yeah, it's not really softening up much. Let's take the contrast just so it's doing the edge. Okay, so uh, it's got a warp over that. I could put a texture over this and that should do the job. So let's right click, add a fill layer, and then our textures. Um, do I have cracks at all? Uh, I've got some grunge cracks. There we go. Let's drag that and drop that in there invert that because it's the wrong way around and change the uh, blend to add no not add where's my blend gone there it is let's take it to subtract then ah now I do need it inverted there we go <laughs> there we've got it okay so I mean that's okay but I want it to be a little bit dirtier than that uh, so I'm going to add some across the top of this. Uh, la, 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 let's add a fill. Whoops, not like that though. I seem to be saying a lot of that recently. Uh, let's add a black mask to that. And then we'll add a generator. I'm just going to use the dirt and see what we get. Let's switch over to the mask. There we go. Okay, so dirt level, we can turn that up or down, we can increase the contrast, I'm going to take grunge scale down a bit so that it's uh, a little bit more kind of uh, blobby, take the amount, take that up, now I'm getting a bit of overlap. And now if we go back to our <coughs> material layer, uh, I can adjust this. So let's take that down to a bit more of a dirtier colour. Take it a little brown, perhaps. There we go. And then I'm going to increase the roughness all the way up. There we go. That's quite nice. Okay, so we've got a little sign in now. That's not bad. Looks alright from a distance, which is where I'm going to be seeing it from. Uh, so what else have we got? We've got uh, these kind of handles to do, and we've got the little light at the top. Uh, so we'll do the brass next, uh, the handles, and um, you know we'll see where we go from there. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so let's uh, switch over to the brass texture here. And for this one, we'll go over to our materials and we'll just drag and drop the brass pure over. Let's get rid of this particular layer here. Uh, now, I don't want all of this to be uh, to look like that. So let's see if I can uh, add some changes. Let's go back to our base color layer and add a fill. And for this fill, I'm going to want the uh, basic paint color. 
so we'll click our little magnifier there and go over and pick that there we go somewhere along those lines and now we can pop a uh, a mask on this to blend so we'll add a black mask and add a let's add a generator and we'll use dirt this is probably going to take a little bit of adjusting so let's turn the dirt level up that's better and we'll take the grunge scale down and the grunge amount up a little bit there we go okay so that's kind of right for here but down here I want to take some of this out so we'll add a paint I'm uh, gonna go and find uh, just a blank brush there and take that down and then I'll resize my brush and I'm just gonna paint out that there now I do want to put a little kind of uh, detail in that I guess uh, so let me pop in a, a quick paint there a quick paint layer and we're going to use uh, a normal detail for this so if I type in norm we'll get our normal pieces up and on my brush uh, now I want to turn everything off except normal uh, I need a, sen a sensible brush here actually so let's go back to our basic hard brush there we go and then in here we'll type the search for normal again and I'm just going to pick out uh, one of these circles I think just to give it a little bit of uh, detail nothing too uh, drastic uh, we've got a screw slot here which I think I could probably turn into uh, a keyhole Ah, need to drag and drop it onto the normal of course I always do that there we go that's a little bit much so I want to rotate this 90 degrees because I can't see it I'm gonna go up to my rotation and just type in 90 and then I'll pop that on there and from a distance that should be good enough for me yeah I think so okay so from a distance we're looking good uh, I think my brass might be a bit too shiny so I'm going to increase the roughness just a bit to give it a bit of age there we go okay so last thing then was we're going to put a little bit of a light up here um, so we'll do that next I'll talk to you then okay so this light piece we're going to use a gradient to kind of fade the light in so let's select the light and I want to go to uh, the 2d 3d view uh, because this is our UV and I want to match the gradient to that so let's delete that layer there and I just want to pop in a fill to um, be able to control our properties of the layer and then a black mask to restrict where it's going to show uh, la, 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 on a fill okay so in my textures if I type gradient I'll get a few gradients up and the one I want is this uh, gradient linear 2 might want that one but I don't think so we'll go for this one which is nice and smooth so if I pop that in there um, and go to our mask view you'll see that it only covers part of it so all I need to do is just drag that down until it covers our UV area so we've got it fading in and then fading out uh, we have some parameters on the gradient which we can work with so we can bring it down a little bit uh, we can change the contrast to make it harder I don't really want that we can change the tiling I don't really want that either um, so the balance I think somewhere around there which is probably not far off where it started uh, so let's nip back to our material view and then on the properties uh, I'm going to leave color on 
take all those off except there. So color, let's make it kind of bluish. There we go. Well, it seems that might go down further than I expected it to. I might have a look at that in a second. I think my light might go down below there, which is annoying, but never mind. Uh, so on my mask, I can just drag this up until I get to where I want to be. Perhaps it's actually the other way around. There we go. And now, because I've got this kind of band up here, I am going to turn tiling on. Uh, so let's tile it. Oh no, it's tiling the wrong way. Never mind. Okay, so let's just take that down a little bit till I get the ring where I want it to. And I'll take that down a bit as well so that the top is okay. Okay, that was uh, stupid of me, but never mind. Uh, so that's my colour. Um, so emissive and uh, the emissive I want to be more or less the same colour except lighter. There we go. So let's change the uh, layer properties now. Um, for this one that's pretty much what I want. Um, I might want to add a little bit of roughness to it and take the roughness down uh, because I'm going to create a fill layer for below this now which is going to deal with the grey area. So we'll make it a little greyer, just a little, not too much. And for this one we will take the roughness and turn it up a little bit there we go so not perfect not ideal but uh, yeah I think I'm moderately happy um, I actually want this to be much 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 shinier so let's take that off completely and let's just take that down in that in that direction there there we go it's, now it's uh, a little bit on the more shiny side excellent okay so I said this is the last one, but actually it's just the main bit of the last one. Uh, what I actually want to do is just put one more uh, detail over the, the box itself. And I'm just going to put some white flake, white flex in to um, show some dirt and wear and such like. So we'll do that next and then we'll be done. Talk to you then. Okay, so let's go back to the 3D view and then I'm just going to rotate around. There we go. That's more like it. And back on my box layer at the top, I'm going to add a fill. The fill is going to be white. Uh, I'm going to leave the height on and the rough, uh, so color, height, and rough. Uh, I'm going to turn the color right up. Uh, but for the height, I'm just going to change this so that the height is on a normal blend. So now you can see that everything underneath it, there is no, you know, there is no light. It is all, or no height rather, uh, it's all flattened out. So where my white flecks are going to be, we're going to have, you know, no wood grain showing through underneath. So we'll add a black mask to that. And for this black mask, what shall we use? We'll use a fill layer. There we go. So this fill layer is currently like a mid gray, so it's blending. Uh, but if we go up here and we'll pop in dirt, I think we're going to use a grunge actually. So let's type grunge. And what's this? Grunt paint peeled, that's not really what I want. Grunge scratches, that might be quite nice to blend in. What's this one? Grunge scratches rough. Well, let's try grunge scratches first. There we go. And now we get these little uh, scratches all over the place, and that's fine, but they're just 
too big. Um, so let's increase the scale there, take that right down, perhaps a little bit more than that. There we go, and perhaps even more than that. That's more like it. So above this, I want to blank out some of those scratches. So let's um, add in a new layer. So we'll add in another fill, and this time I'm going to use something to blank them out. So let's use this one here. There we go. And then we'll blend it with a subtract. And now, if I turn that one off and on, you'll see that some of our scratches now disappear. They're not quite so uniform over the whole. Um, I think I actually want this to be inverted, if it can be. Yes, it can. That's the wrong one. It's this one I want inverted. Uh, la, la, la. Invert. There we go because I want there to be fewer scratches than there were, essentially. Um, I'll change the scale of this to two, just so I get a few more. And then above this one, we want some spots. So let's type in spot, see what we've got. So we'll add a new layer. And this time, what have we got here? Uh, grunge spots run shavings that looks good because it's got some variation in the color we'll pop ah sorry i've created a new fill layer instead of a new fill mask there we go pop that one in there we'll adjust our scale again looks like a decorator's been having a go at that one we'll change this to an add and then I want another layer above it to uh, take out some of the, uh, you know, take take away some of it. So let's do that. Uh, so let's add a new fill layer. Let's have a look, see what we've got here. Let's try dirt. Getting all sorts of things here. Uh, I want just the textures. There we go. Uh, this grunge spots will be good. Let's drag and drop that in there. Going to increase uh, the size. Change the blend to a sub. And invert that. So <laughs> mostly getting very little at the minute um, so we might actually want to adjust some of these just with our uh, layer blend to you know not lose absolutely everything okay so we have a bit of a mix there of all sorts of things and that's not too bad it's a bit much perhaps so Overall, then I'll just take that down on the layer blend. There we go. Come on, layer blend. No, you're not behaving. Not going to behave for me. Never mind. I'll just take these down even more. I don't want them to overwhelm the texture. Yeah, I want them to be, uh, you know, working with each other, working with the underlying texture, not completely overwhelming it. Okay. Okay, so um, there we have it. I could, if I wanted to, perhaps add a tiny bit of height to that, just to give it a little bit of something. Okay, so let's have a look at our render, see what that looks like. Okay, not too bad. It, it's not my favourite background uh, for this. I think the cloudy one would be nice. So let's have a look at that. Take it from Panorama, put it to my nice overcast clouds. And yeah, that's a bit more like it, a bit more dramatic. I'll just uh, use shift and right mouse to rotate that round. 
to get something looking good there we go so i hope you found that useful i hope you found it you know you learned something and you got something out of it um if you have any questions let me know below and uh, i'll talk to you again in another set thank you very much